Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm taking a look at Cable. His potential took forever to get unlocked, but now that I have it, I am going to be covering what he can do in PvE, just so you kind of get a baseline of how he compares to other characters, since you probably already know what he can do in PvE. And I'll also showcase a little bit of his potential in PvP. The character will most likely just be built up by players that are competitive in ABX and ABL, since he has the most value there. However, if you also push to higher stages of World Boss Legend or want to, then he is a pretty good option for that as well, since he has the Machine Tag and the Weapon Masters Tag, and is one of the better options for those restrictions. In addition to that, he also has the Coveted Leadership Tag, he's also a Blast character and a Mutant character, so you have a lot of categories that he fits in when you're playing different modes, again like ABX and ABL, and World Boss Legend. So if you don't have many of the other characters built up to T4 or even level 80, then he is a good option to build up to at least level 80 or something like that past level 70, because he will give you a ton of value across many modes. On the stage 9 null test, without a leadership or supports, and without a damage proc, he was able to complete the stage in about 3 minutes and 30 seconds roughly. If you watch the Strife video, you'd know that this is about 20 seconds slower than Strife, and as you'll see in the following clips, he does actually perform worse than Strife in PvE, just at level 70, but that obviously changes drastically once he goes to level 80. You'll see in this clip that he is able to complete the first phase of stage 34 of Null, again without a leadership support or a damage proc, but completes it with almost no time remaining, so that means that he can probably complete the stage, but again with almost no time left. When I took him into a stage 54, this time I added a leadership and a support. However, he wasn't able to complete the first phase in time. He was off by almost a minute, so he obviously can't complete the stage without a damage proc. Again, if you watched the Strife video, you'd know that Strife without a damage proc was able to complete the stage with about 30 seconds left. Because I was curious to see how much of a difference the level 80 makes, I actually ended up equipping a mighty CTP of energy and redoing the stage, and with that, I was able to complete it with around a minute and 30 seconds left. After I took the character to level 80, I tested him on the same stage again, but this time without a damage proc or a custom gear whatsoever, and he was able to complete the stage with about almost a minute and 50 seconds left which shows you just how powerful the level 70 to level 80 upgrade is, because it's basically like having a mighty energy equipped to the character by default. I did end up equipping a mighty CTP of Rage on the character after I did these World Boss Legend tests, so I ended up pushing the character a little bit to see what he could and could not complete at level 80 without the damage procs. So again, without a damage proc, he wasn't really able to complete stage 79 of Mephisto, though was only off by around 20 seconds of completing the first phase in that 60 second time frame to be able to actually complete the stage entirely. Versus Ultron, I couldn't really access a higher stage than 49, and you can see that with no damage proc, he is able to complete this at level 80. I wasn't able to complete stage 60 of Gore with no damage proc, and I actually ended up dying, so I just marked off how much damage I did within the first two minutes, and I basically got him down to the last 20 health bars of the first phase. Cable is likely going to find Gore as one of the worst World Boss Legends to face, because he's usually static when he's attacking and has long animations, whereas Gore just tends to move around a lot, so he can sometimes break targeting, but more importantly, he'll do a lot of damage to Cable, and Cable doesn't have a ton of healing since he only has 15% on his third skill. You can see in these following clips that I ended up equipping that mighty CTP of Rage to see how much better his performance got, and if you want to build him for PvE, it basically comes down to either a Rage or an Energy. An Energy will give you a higher performance cap in World Boss Legend specifically, however, even though he is proc friendly, he can be a little bit tricky to not miss your procs, since some of these skills might activate the proc early. This is kind of why I would probably recommend a CTP of Rage overall, unless you're really trying to push the higher stages of World Boss Legend, 
because the Rage is just way easier to use and is almost equally as effective. In addition to that, the character has guaranteed crit in his kit, as well as a little bit of crit rate and crit damage, so it makes it pretty easy to cap out those stats when you have a CTP of Rage, and the proc will end up activating more consistently because of that guaranteed crit. With the Mighty Rage, I was able to complete this stage roughly a minute and 10 seconds faster than with no damage proc. Versus Mephisto, he could actually complete stage 79 and did so with around a minute and 50 seconds remaining. You heard me say that versus Null, he was able to take off about a minute and 10 seconds from the clear time, but he was also very close to the quickest clear time that you can do pending the animations and phase changes. So versus Ultron, it kind of gives you a better idea of how much of an improvement the Mighty Rage provides. And you can see from this clip that I was able to shave off around two minutes and 10 seconds from the clear time. And then finally versus Gore, within those first two minutes, the character was able to do seven additional health bars of damage and was able to complete the fight entirely this time with around a minute and 10 seconds left. Although Cable's performance in War Lost Legend is pretty solid, I'm pretty sure that the majority of the people that do decide to build him up will do so because of the value that he provides in ABX and ABL. He is the meta option for the Blast Hero Day and also the meta option for the Mutant Hero Day in ABL. The character has all of the cancel effects in ABX, including Paralysis, Burn, and Silence, and I believe is only missing one or two in ABL, which almost seems on purpose so that they can incentivize people to get him to T4 so that they can equip any kind of character that has those cancel effects to make up for it. Because of that high chain hit damage and because of the high number of hits in his kit, you can see just how effective he is in this mode. Even at level 70 with a CTP of energy, I was able to score nearly 10 million with him with, I would say, a kind of decent rotation, not really that great, and I did end up missing a bunch of procs. At level 80 with a Mighty Rage, I was able to score nearly a million more, close to 11 million on the first try, so I'm pretty sure that people who refine his rotation a bit more and have a way better build than I have, don't have any Odins or an artifact, can probably score close to 12 million pretty easily, probably even way more than that. His performance in ABL was actually quite surprising since I was able to score close to 8 million at level 80 with that Mighty Rage, which is very similar to the score that I get with Professor X or Storm, both at T4 with Mighty Rages. So it's pretty easy for me to see that once the character jumps up to T4 that he will easily surpass those and is the reason why he is meta for the hero mutant day restriction. The rotation that I used for the character is to do a quick cancel of the first and second skill, then from there you just do an easy 3, cancel 5, cancel 4. When you have access to your ultimate, the rotation does become a little bit trickier. The one that I went with is to do a 4 and delay cancel after his character just moves slightly, then you do a quick cancel of the third skill, fifth skill, and then stay in the ultimate skill to finish off. This is the proc friendly rotation, meaning that it does work with an energy or a rage. I don't know if it is the absolutely most ideal rotation, but it seemed to be pretty effective for me. You can see in this that even at level 70 with a mighty energy, I wasn't using a mighty rage at this point, the character was able to solo giant boss raid Dormammu pretty easily. I wouldn't really recommend building the character for PvP, but if you don't care about PvE whatsoever, then the character can have some value in PvP, specifically because he has partial iframes on all of his skills and he goes into them quite quickly, and he has that 85% chance to penetrate all sources, with the exception of shield and super armor. His AI also goes into his hardest hitting skills first, and usually just rotates between them, the 5th and 4th skill, meaning that he has a high amount of burst damage, and those skills also have a good amount of lingering damage afterwards, even if he does end up dying while they are cast. So if you do want to get some value out of the character in PvP, then I would recommend anything with Guard Break, Immunity, and Invincible, and for the most part, that would just be an Authority CTP. To make the character consistent, you kind of need that Guard Break Immunity, otherwise other characters may interrupt him before he goes into his skills, which usually happens if you have an Energy or Rage. But other than that, the invincible really helps if the opponent has iframe ignores, since you can still survive and then keep going into your hard hitting skills to wipe them out. This particular clip isn't really anything too crazy, but it shows that with an invincible obelisk and the guard break immunity, he can become a functional character in PvP content, specifically things like Alliance Conquest. 
Generally speaking, for PvE, Cable is now the best free Blast character in the game. There are many other good Blast characters, some which are better than him, but they have some kind of premium cost attached to them. For example, Adam Warlock is a native tier 2 that you need to get with crystals. You have Magneto that you need to get the deluxe pack and then also get his premium uniform. You have Professor X that you need to get him with crystals now, I believe, or from a pack of some sort. And you also have Storm, which you need to get the premium uniform for her. So if you take all of these characters, Cable is basically the cheapest with the highest performance and value overall. So keeping that in mind, if you don't have any of these other characters built up, then Cable is a really solid choice for a Blast type, and even more so if you don't have a mutant option for ABX and ABL, or even for World Boss Legend. Just make sure that you are able to get him to level 80, since you saw how drastic the performance improvement was, going from 70 to 80 on the character. I'm not entirely sure if I'll be able to cover Omega Red and Domino before the Black Panther patch hits. You'll just have to wait and see what the next video is, so just make sure to stay tuned on that. But that pretty much does it for this one. If you have any comments, then just leave them in the comment section down below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. For the most part, if you liked this video or found it entertaining, please consider leaving a like, sharing it with others, and possibly subscribing. As always, I appreciate people taking the time to watch these, so thank you. But the video is now over.